today. We are here to celebrate our great God, and we welcome all of you in, especially anyone who may be visiting today. What a great joy to have you here. My name is Dean Van Ness, and I have the privilege of pastoring this congregation. We welcome you in today. Before we go any further, let us pause and give praise where praise is due. Lord and God, we come before you today, and we thank you for this opportunity to worship you on this beautiful day. Oh, God, you are so good, so gracious, so gentle with us. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for showering us with your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the changing of the seasons and for this beautiful day. What an opportunity to praise you. Thank you, God, for bringing us here with brothers and sisters and friends in this place, a safe place, where we may experience you and your spirit. So come, Father, refresh us and renew us, heal us, forgive us, cleanse us, and grant us new life in Jesus today. We pray it boldly in Christ's name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take a moment, find out who's here today, greet each other in the name of Christ.
God, we come before you today, and as we do, we celebrate this great love. This love that finds us, even in our desperation, even in our brokenness, in our shortcomings and sins. Your love is reaching down. You have sent your Son to die for us. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of Jesus, for his life, his death, his resurrection and ascension. Lord, help us to trust this life, the life of Jesus. As we join ourselves to him through faith by your spirit, Oh, how we need renewal, healing, forgiveness, refreshing, new life. Truth be told, Lord, our hearts are wandering. We are forever straying from your love. And yet, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And we praise God, we praise you for that today, Lord. And even in our waywardness and wandering, our shortcomings and sins, that you pursue us, and you find us, and you call us upward. Lord, thank you that through Jesus Christ, we are given new life, we are washed clean, we are flawless in Him. Thank you, Lord. We pray it in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. <laughs>
good it is to worship our great God. Amen? Amen. We welcome all of you who are watching online, those of you who are listening to our podcast. What a great joy and honor to have you with us as well. You too are a part of our extended family here at Grace Church. We welcome you in today. We hope that you've already received the blessing through our worship. Today we get to our, uh, to finally to chapter 8 in the Gospel of Mark. We've been studying the book of Mark since the beginning of the year. Uh, when Kingdoms Collide is our sermon series, and today we get to continue by reading Mark chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. In my Bible, the section is entitled, Jesus Feeds the 4,000. And so I invite you to follow the words on the screen or look along in your own Bible. Mark chapter 8, verse 1. Hear the word of God. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way, because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 men were present. And having sent them away, Jesus got into the boat with his disciples and went to the region of Dalmanutha. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord remains forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Morning, God, we come before you today to hear a word, a word spoken, a word of life, a word of encouragement, a word of exhortation, a word of comfort, a word of challenge. Oh Lord, how we need your word. It is life-giving and sustaining. It is our bread for the soul. So Lord, would you come now and speak to us as we still our bodies, as we silence our lips, as we focus our minds, and as we open our hearts, may your Holy Spirit come and breathe new life into us. In your holy name we pray it. In all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Are you hungry today? Are you hungry right now? Anybody thinking about lunch? Anybody got lunch on your mind? You got any plants? Anybody got you know some food at home? You got your chicken or roast beef or maybe your ham or anybody got a roast in the oven? Nobody does that anymore, right? Y'all going to the pizza ranch after the service today? Rick, Rick's gonna buy for everybody. Thank you, Rick. That's so kind of you to offer. Uh, so maybe you've got lunch on your mind already today. Do you like uh, what's your favorite dessert? Do you have some favorite desserts? Do you like chocolate? Huh? Pumpkin pie, that's that time of year, right? So, maybe ice cream. Ooh, sounds good. Do you like bread? Anybody here bread fans? You got wheat bread, white bread, wonder bread, pumpernickel bread, banana bread. You know, Mom had a, a home-baked bread machine, and uh, she would bake for the, the smell of that bread wafting through the air in our home was something else, I tell you. Anybody hungry now? <laughs> Yeah, right? Okay. And I'm wetting your appetite here. Well, let me ask you this question. How's your spiritual hunger? Let's shift gears just a little bit. Are you hungry for God? Amen. Do you have a thirst for more of His Spirit, more of the living water of the Holy Spirit? Or is there maybe 
kind of an emptiness inside today. Maybe you're feeling tired or worn out, maybe a little burned out, and you're longing for something deeper. You're longing for a spiritual touch from God himself. Well, boy, do I have some really good news for you today. If you are hungry, the good news is Jesus Christ meets your needs, both physically and spiritually. In today's passage, we find still another miracle story of Jesus feeding the masses. In Mark 6, we saw him feeding 5,000. And in Mark 8, we see Jesus feeding 4,000. Jesus says, I have compassion on these people. They've already been with me three days. They have nothing to eat. And if I send them home now, they're going to collapse along the way. Some have come from quite a distance. We need to give them some bread, some food to eat. Why the two stories? Feeding of the 5,000, feeding of the 4,000? Well, we're going to find out. Are you hungry today? How's your appetite? Today I want to give you some basic teaching. It's almost so simple, it's embarrassing. And yet, oh, how we need to be reminded of these simple yet profound <coughs> truths that make a difference in our daily lives. I invite you to take out your outline and fill it in as we go because there are three good news aspects to today's story of Jesus feeding the 4,000. And the first one is simply this. Jesus meets physical needs. Just say it with me. Jesus meets physical needs. David puts it this way in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. That is to say, the Lord God provides for all of our needs. Not always our whims and desires, but our needs. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Notice that sometimes we have to be made to lie down in green pastures. Some of you hit the floor, jumping out of bed with your feet spinning. You are ready to go and we run ourselves ragged. But God says, come to me and you will find rest. Rest for your souls. You will find rest for your tired bodies. He makes us lie down in green pastures. Physical rest. It also speaks of the abundance of these green, lush pastures that restore our soul. He leads me beside quiet waters. For rushing waters would be dangerous for the sheep who, who don't know any different. They wander into the stream. They could be swept away and drowned. No, the Lord leads us beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. The Apostle Paul put it this way in Philippians 4.19. My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Notice all of your needs. There's no distinction here between physical or spiritual. Sometimes I hear people say, oh, I never pray for my own needs. I like to pray for others. I feel like it's selfish for me to pray about my own stuff. You know, I mean, God has got bigger, more important things to do, right, than to care for my little needs. Now that sounds so pious, so correct, so religious. Oh, wow, that's great. You don't even think of yourself. You're always praying for others. But friends, that is not a biblical concept. Jesus teaches us to pray, give us today our daily bread. This is a very real and personal, practical need. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus highlights our very real and practical need for clothing and food and drink. He says, look at the, the flowers of the field. And back in Solomon was arrayed like one of these. And if your Heavenly Father knows that you need these things, He will provide them for you. So do not worry 
about tomorrow what you will eat or drink. For God your Father knows. In today's passage, Jesus feeds 4,000 men and who knows how many women with real bread. This isn't like some spiritual analogy kind of thing. This is real bread. So wonder bread, white bread, wheat bread, gluten-free. I don't know what it was. But Jesus fed the people. They were hungry. Their stomachs maybe were growling. And Jesus feeds them. He meets their physical needs. And the question I want to ask you today is this. What physical needs will you bring before God before the sun sets today? Before your head hits the pillow tonight? What physical needs will you lay before God in prayer? You say, oh, that's not that big of a deal. I'll just live with it. I don't want to bother God with my little issues. I mean, God's got way more important things to, uh, to do than to help me with my problems, my back pain, or my short shoulder, or my upset stomach, or my gallbladder, or my ingrown toenail. You know, God's got bigger issues. But the truth is, Jesus cares about the little stuff, even your personal, practical needs. Maybe it's a pile of unpaid, overdue bills. Maybe it's looking for a new place to live or a new and better job. Maybe you struggle to make ends meet. You need some real food. The good news is Jesus stands ready to help you today, to help his people. It's not always through some miraculous intervention, but very often it's through the body, through others, as we become aware of those needs and seek to meet those needs and to bless others. You see, Jesus is concerned with the nuts and bolts details of your life, not just with the great, big, eternal, spiritual, cosmic issues of the universe, but he also cares about the little stuff and the very practical needs of real hunger. He wants to help you pay your bills on time. Jesus wants to help you heal from your surgery. Jesus wants to help you eat right and be healthy. Jesus wants to help you get over your cold or COVID or whatever it is. Jesus wants to help you deal with your grief, the loss of that loved one. He wants to help you have a nice home to live in. He wants to help you have a thriving marriage and relationships. The psalmist says in Psalm 62, 8, Trust in him that is the Lord at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him. For God is our refuge. Jesus is sensitive to your physical needs, human limitations, and earthly conditions, as well as the big spiritual matters. Again, I ask, what physical need will you lay before God today before your head hits the pillow tonight? Jesus meets physical needs. Second, a second good news aspect to today's story is that Jesus meets spiritual needs. Say it with me. Jesus meets spiritual needs. Now this one you might have expected, right? What were the people in today's passage doing, having been with Jesus in this remote place for three days? Well, they weren't playing cornhole beanbags or kindling books. No doubt they were listening to Jesus' teaching. They were learning about spiritual things. They were getting their souls fed. And when Jesus says in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty, Jesus is not just talking about physical bread, as, as important as that is. Jesus is using the concept of bread to make an analogy. The daily food that is an important part of these people's ancient diet. To point us all to spiritual things, the need for bread for the soul. You've heard of chicken soup for the soul. Jesus is bread for the soul. 
Jesus is saying, just as eating your daily bread is an important part to an important part of your diet or your physical body, so too my being, my very life, is like bread for your soul. You need me to satisfy you spiritually. Without me, there is no deeper spiritual satisfaction. And in this story, Jesus is actually pointing us to the Eucharist, that is, to the breaking of bread, the giving of thanks, the sacrament of Holy Communion, where Jesus takes the bread and he gives thanks and he breaks it. The story is an allusion to that. You eat bread to satisfy your stomach, Jesus says you also need me in your heart and life to satisfy your soul. If Mick Jagger had found Jesus, he would have never had to write the song, Can't Get No Satisfaction. <laughs> or maybe it would have been a whole different song with a whole new title. <laughs> so let me ask you this. What spiritual needs will you bring before Jesus today? Are you hungry for more of God in your life? Has your faith become merely a routine, kind of ritual, kind of a religion, going through the motions? But your heart isn't there. Do you feel a void and emptiness? Are you longing for something more? Maybe you're like Mick Jagger, can't get no satisfaction. You're looking for love in all the wrong places. And the truth is we all go through seasons of ups and downs spiritually, of drought and oasis, lean years and fat years. But how many of you know that God is a God of the wilderness? He leads the Israelites out of Egypt in one day through Moses, only to have them wander around in the desert for 40 years. God makes the shepherd boy David king, but only after he spent his early years in the wilderness tending sheep and fending off ferocious animals. John the Baptist is the voice of one crying in the wilderness, says the scriptures. He emerges out of the desert. And Jesus is sent into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tested and tried for 40 days. And then in today's passage, the disciples ask Jesus this question. Where in this remote region can anyone get enough bread to feed them? Notice the words, in this remote region. How many of you know God does his best work in remote regions? In the desert. In the wilderness of our lives. If you're feeling a bit empty today, a little dry, tired, hungry, and thirsty, longing for something more, rejoice. God is likely preparing you for something better and deeper and higher. You may very well be on the verge of a spiritual breakthrough, a kind of spiritual promotion, if you will. And if you open your heart to Jesus, asking him to fill you, to come in, to meet that need, why, guess what? Jesus promises to do just that. In Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11, the 711 passage, as I call it, Jesus says this, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. What an invitation. Jesus says, whoever is asking, is receiving. Whoever is seeking, is finding. Whoever is knocking, the door is already being opened to him. And if you then, even though you are evil, how many of you as fathers, even though you're sinful, you know how to give good gifts to your children. If your son asks for bread, you're not going to give him a stone. If he asks for fish, you're not going to give him a snake. No, you, even though you're sinful and fallen people, you know how to give good <coughs> gifts to your children. So how much more then will your perfect Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Amen. What a promise. 
In fact, Luke's version of that same passage goes a little bit further, and Luke says this. He says, how much more then will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus is talking about spiritual matters now. Matters of the heart and soul. And the good news today is that Jesus is up to the task. He can and will meet not only your physical needs, but your spiritual needs as you open your heart to Him anew. Including your deepest need for salvation in Jesus Himself. Again, I ask, what spiritual needs will you lay before Jesus in prayer today before your head hits the pillow tonight? Thirdly, a third good news aspect to today's story of Jesus feeding the 4,000 is not only does Jesus meet your physical needs, does Jesus meet your spiritual needs, but Jesus meets your needs. Say it with me. Jesus meets your high needs. It's one thing to talk about Jesus meeting physical and spiritual needs kind of on a theoretical basis, on, a, on the basis of his ability as God we know, we study it. Uh, it's quite another, however, to talk about Jesus meeting physical and spiritual needs on a practical, personal level that's meeting your needs. And yet this is where the rubber meets the road, Right? It's nice to have a good, sound, biblical teaching and doctrine about God, but how much better to actually know God, to have a relationship with this God who is real and living and active and involved in our daily lives, meeting my personal needs. Praise God, this is exactly the kind of God we have. One who is intimately involved in human affairs. Not a God who is far off and aloof and distant, but one who is intimately concerned and integrally involved in your life and mine. Do you remember when God called Moses in Exodus chapter 3 to confront Pharaoh to let the Israelites out of Egypt? Remember that story? God speaks to Moses through a burning bush. Says, I have seen the misery of my people and I'm calling you, Moses, to help deliver my people from their suffering and to lead them out of Egypt toward the promised land. I want you to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And Moses says, who, 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 who am I that, 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 that I should do this? God says, I, I will be with you. Don't worry. And Moses says, well, suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, what is his name? What should I tell them? And God says something very interesting. Get this. He says, I am who I am. Moses, you tell them, I am has sent you. It's a very interesting phrase, and it is, there's a lot of different interpretations and ideas, and how, what does that really mean? But one such interpretation is that God is starting a sentence that he invites you to finish. I am am blank. In other words, I am, I will be who you need me to be in order to get to the place that I have called you to be. I will help you to become the person that I have called you to be. If you need strength, I am strength. If you need peace, I am peace. You need power, I am power. You need assurance, I am assurance. 
Now, God is not our genie in the bottle. God is not whoever we, we think he is or want to say that he is. And he doesn't have to cater to our every whim and desire. But what I think what God is saying is, I will accomplish my purpose in you. I will meet your needs. And I think God is saying the same thing to us today too. I will be who you need me to be in your situation, in your particular struggle, in your particular suffering, in the seasons of your life. In other words, I will meet your needs, your personal, practical needs. You can trust me in this. I've got you. You are mine. Now let me ask you, what personal needs will you bring before God today? Before your head hits the pillow tonight? Is it a physical issue? Is it a spiritual matter? Is it a relationship struggle, a marital problem? Is it a personal battle with sin, a bad habit, or an addiction that you just can't seem to break? Maybe it's a hurt or a hang-up from the past that you can't get beyond. Maybe it's a kind of lack of faith or vision for your life. You're just going through the motions. Maybe it's a deep and profound loss, the loss of a, of a loved one. And you're, you're struggling with grief and you're having a hard time moving forward. True confessions today. We're all broken people. We all need Jesus. We all need healing. Praise God. The Lord created us as needy people. Jesus is teaching us to depend on Him. To rely on His strength. Because we can't do it on our own. And we were never intended to. I dare say that if you would pause and look at your life honestly, you would admit that Jesus is already at work in your life, meeting your needs. He's giving you food. You all are pretty well fed here today. He's giving you shelter. He's giving you clothes. And I'm really glad for that. You all have clothes on today. He's giving you strength to face that problem, to overcome that obstacle, to meet that challenge. God has provided you with a wonderful church home and spiritual family to encourage you. He's blessed you with great brothers and sisters. His grace and His love, they are sufficient for you, and He is already keeping you afloat in this hard and difficult life. Even in the deserts of life, Jesus is meeting your needs, even today. He is a good shepherd. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, in the deserts, in the wilderness, in the remote regions, Jesus says, I have you. I will provide. You shall not lack any. So why the two feeding stories? Did, did Mark just retelling the story and maybe a little bit, maybe he's correcting it. Okay, there really wasn't 5,000 people. No, there were 4,000, right? Okay, there weren't really 12 basketfuls left over. There were, there were seven. You know, uh, no, there weren't five loaves. There were really seven loaves. I mean, no, it, they're very similar, and yet they are different. And, and later in this very chapter, in Mark 8, verses 18 to 21, Jesus makes it clear that there are two different accounts here. The first one, primarily toward a Jewish audience, and the second one, more toward a Gentile audience. And that alone could be a sermon. But what's really going on here? Why two stories so similar? Well, the key to understanding this episode is the disciples' pathetic 
response to Jesus in verse 4. But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How disappointing and frustrating these words must have been entering into the ears of Jesus, the bread of life. They had just seen Jesus take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000 people. That wasn't that long ago. Had they already forgotten the miraculous power of Jesus? They should have understood. They, they could have remembered. If Jesus can do it once, he can certainly do it again. I mean, where in this remote place can we find bread? I mean, duh! The bread of life is standing in your midst. And I think Jesus is saying through the telling of this story again. In fact, he's crying out to you and me today. Trust me. Don't be so dull. You've seen me at work in the past. You know that I will come through for you in the future. And with your present needs too. You can count on me. Don't count me out. Remember the wonders I have done. Call on me. Pray to me. Let me help you. Swallow your pride and stop trying to do life all on your own with your own limited view of resources. Jesus is saying, I will meet all of your physical and all of your spiritual needs. I will meet your needs even in the desert and the wildernesses of our lives. For today, Jesus is extending to you bread for the hungry. Lord, we're hungry. We're thirsty. Lord, come and work through us. Lead us and guide us. Help us. Provide for us. Lord, we're so short-sighted. Our memories are so, so poor. So, Lord, come and speak to us and meet our needs. We have some physical needs. It's okay. We have some spiritual needs. We are needy. Lord, we have some very personal, practical needs, some of which may be too private to even articulate out loud. But Lord, you are here. And you can meet these needs. For you have compassion upon us, just as you did the peoples of long ago. Oh God, we are hungry. And we need you. We need Jesus, this bread of life, to meet our needs. So may we come. All who are thirsty. All who are hungry, may we bow down before you even today, before the end of this day, to confess our need and to pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In your holy name we pray. It. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Spirit of Grace. We want to welcome all who are visiting today. Always a great joy to have visitors with us. Thank you. God is so faithful. We have visitors, it seems like, every week here at Grace Church. We welcome you in. You are important to us. We, we love you. We value you. You are welcome to come early and join us for refreshments between the services. If you like, down on the lower level at our fellowship hall. Maybe you had some goodies today. I don't know. Next Sunday, we are beginning a special, uh, what I call the discovery class. Something that uh, for visitors who maybe are thinking a little bit about membership and they're just wondering, what is this Grace Church all about? Is this a cult? What are we, what are we about here? What's going on? What am I into? Right? So, well, we have a class called the Discovery Class that I lead and will begin next Sunday between services from about 10.05 till about 10.35 or 10.40 or so. And we're going to meet right in the education wing, down in the, the adult Sunday school room, the room with the sofas and soft seats in it. Uh, we're going to just explore and have some conversation together over the next six weeks for, uh, well, what is Grace Church? Who are we? What is the Reformed Church of America? What do we believe? And uh, there's no obligation to join the church by attending the class. You can just come. It's a safe place to learn and grow and for us to just get to know each other better. There's more information about that in the bulletin and also there's a flyer on the table in the foyer. We invite you as visitors and anyone really to come and grow and learn with us. The Fishnet and Rock are off to a great start. We thank those of you who have signed up to be prayer partners with us in this discipleship ministry. You may find your prayer partner assignments in your mail slot today. Thank you so much. Please pray faithfully for the teachers, the helpers, the leaders, and all of the students and their parents as well. Thank you for your prayers. We also have some adult education, a great experience coming up for you, a brand new fresh small group by Max Lucado. Let's roll that video. Let me give you a little taste. We all have those times in life in which we were made for that moment. We are in place to fulfill God's will for that moment. So the key is to, is to be faithful, be willing to stand up when needed, to, to pray when needed, and just believe that God will use you at the right time to do the right thing. I think the sovereignty of God was the big takeaway for me, that we all need to be reminded that God is weaving together all the threads of human history to create the tapestry that he desires. I think the fact that God's name is never mentioned in the book of Esther makes it all the more intriguing because if you're going through a tough time, you don't sense God's presence. You're searching for God in between the lines. And the Esther story is like that. We're searching for God's movement in between the lines. So I think for somebody who's, who's going through a season, a struggle, of a calamity like the book of Esther is about, they can relate to it. You Were Made for This Moment is a five-week video-driven series uh, led by Max Lucado. And we're going to have two sessions once again this season on Thursdays beginning, uh, not next Thursday, but the Thursday following that. There's information in the bulletin. There's a flyer on the table in the foyer. We invite all of you to come. Thursdays at 1045 for those of you who are available during the day. And Thursday evenings at 630. It's a great study, a great series on the book of Esther. And what we can learn, how we can be encouraged in our faith. Even in hard times, difficult times. Even in a culture that's lost its way. How we can stay faithful to God. This is a great series, something fresh again from Max Lucado. We've never done one of this series before. I'm so excited about this one, and I trust you will sign up today at the information station for the group of your choice. And just a footnote, we still have no phone at the church. Uh, we've been out all week. Something got knocked out maybe last week, Saturday. We've been without all week long. So if you're trying to call the church, you're thinking, gee, that pastor, he never works. It just rings and rings and rings. He's never in the office. He's probably out playing golf. 
No, that's not the case. Uh, if you need to contact me, you can shoot me an email, or you can call me on my cell phone, and if you need that number, let me know. But um, uh, just bear with us. We'll have to bear with CenturyLink because they're still working on that issue. Locked out a lot of uh, internet and phone service in this particular neighborhood. You saw it on the news this week. There are many updates, prayer concerns listed in the bulletin. Let us now join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you. That for those of us who pursue you with all of our heart, we are never lacking anything. Even when it may feel like it. When our prayers may not be answered in exactly our time or in the way that we want them to be answered. Yet you are still moving even behind the scenes. You are good. And you are gracious. Lord, there are many within our family today who need a special touch of healing, a dose of your grace. We think of Russ Holden as he continues to heal from surgery. We think of Steve Smith as he goes in for a heart cath this Friday. We think of Tony Meather and Jean Graham as they battle cancer. We think of Debbie Penn as she goes in for surgery this week also and UP Beach as she recovers from COVID. Lord, for those of us who find ourselves alone and lonely, whether we be shut-ins, widows or widowers, or anyone, Lord, we need you. Come to us. Visit us. For those who grieve, for those who suffer, for those who struggle, for those who question you and our very faith, would you reveal yourself to them? Make yourself real. Heal us and help us, we pray. Thank you for a great start to our fishnet and rock midweek ministries. For all of the many children and youth who are attending. We pray that you will continue to bless them and bless their leaders and teachers and helpers. Bless the kitchen crew and those who help with registration and welcoming. Lord, as we work together as a team, may we truly make a difference for Jesus Christ in the lives of these young people. Bless their parents and grandparents. Lord, thank you for this new small group series and the potential that it holds to, to bind us together, to grow us closer to you and to help develop our faith even more. As we learn and study the book of Esther, we pray that you will guide and use this series, this teaching, to encourage us. Lord, we thank you for another session of the Discovery class. It's been a while. And we thank you that we can come together to explore the questions of faith and who we are as a church. For those who are wondering and seeking and just... Uh, needing a place to call home spiritually, would you call them to us to meet next Sunday morning? Thank you for Grace Church. Thank you, Lord, for your working in our midst. We may be small, as has been said, but we are also mighty, mighty in our ministry, mighty in spirit. Lord, come and breathe new life and revival and send us more people. Cause us to grow in every way that is important to you, even as we stay faithful to you. Lord, be with the schools throughout the Cedar Valley and beyond, all students, teachers, parents, principals, bless them. Be with this nation, even the nation that we love but is also torn and, and, and in turmoil, struggling in so many ways. Bring us to your peace, bring us to your truth, bring us to unity, bring revival to this nation. Oh Lord, where there are those who suffer from storms and hurricanes, would you grant them your peace and fill their needs? Lord, thank you for Jesus, the bread of life, the good shepherd. 
the living water of his spirit that refreshes our souls. It is in his name that we pray, the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join Spirit of Grace for a closing song of affirmation. Help is on the way. Amen? Amen.
Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.